Equine Facilitator Therapy aims to promote health and well-being through interaction with horses. Working with horses and professional therapists, individuals with a wide range of physical, mental and emotional difficulties have discovered new ways of reducing and overcoming problems. Developing a relationship with a horse can help individuals overcome fears, build trust, respect and compassion, develop communication skills, problem solving and coping techniques along with self-confidence and self-esteem. Regular sessions with both the horses and therapists encourage clients to transfer these skills to everyday life situations. Our film crew have been regularly visiting the Fortune Centre of Riding Therapy, known to many as the FCRT, in England's New Forest over the past year. The FCRT is unique in offering a three-year residential course for young people with disabilities, providing them with the essential skills needed to help them gain confidence and independence. They achieve this through equine facilitated therapy. The first thing I would say about success for students at the Fortune Centre of, of Riding Therapy is that they're here in the first place. Uh, broadly speaking, aspirations for those with learning difficulties and disabilities in terms of further education are very, very low. When the students are at the Fortune Centre of Riding Therapy on the Further Education Through Horse Mastership course, much of the emphasis of the education is on social education. They're developing numeracy and literacy skills and they are taking accredited qualifications in those areas but students are achieving qualifications which enable them to then get jobs and of course that is the greatest success of all if you can live independently have friendships, have a quality of life, and have occupation. Of course, there are other organisations worldwide that offer equine facilitated therapies. The Federation of Horses and Education and Therapy International, often known as HETI, aims to facilitate the worldwide collaboration of organisations and individuals in the field of equine-assisted activities and therapy. Its executive director, Gisela Rhodes, is currently based at Windrush Farm in Massachusetts. Started in 1964, Windrush Farm was one of the first therapeutic riding centers in the USA. Hippotherapy, psychotherapy, everything is now involved and just the term riding doesn't really cover it anymore. Equine assisted therapies or activities mean to me that um, uh, there is the possibility for the horse to influence the person. The equine assisted uh, therapy um, unit is part of a bigger health organization and we started it because we had a fire we were asked to facilitate and to help uh, the victims of those fire to uh, well with their psychological problems and they asked us if we could find other kind of method which was more accessible for those people who were also young people and with the help of those uh, victims what they told us what was important for them we developed our method which includes also horses and other animals. A Wilson College in Pennsylvania not only offers therapeutic riding it also plays a huge part in training new practitioners to ensure the continued success of equine facilitated therapy. Uh, I've been at Wilson for about 15 years now uh, and, and I'm the person who brought what we call here equine facilitated therapeutics to the college. Uh, the program started in 1998 with the first students entering the program. Part of the reason I came here to Wilson College because specifically for their equine facilitated therapeutics program and I wanted to be able to make a difference in the world through that program specifically. Seeing students that um, have begun the program with so much assistance and now they're riding on their own it's just it's very cool to see and watch all the progress being made. Equine assisted therapy to me means not just giving an individual the opportunity to, lead, to learn real life skills and responsibilities in regards to horses. Um, it also means to me a chance for the people involved with these individuals. I think it's therapy for them as well. Um, speaking um, for myself, it's definitely th therapeutic for me to go and to teach these students and to learn from them. 
I rode horses when I was younger and I have epilepsy and the doctors they found it weird but there was a huge drop in my seizure activity once I started riding. It's basically you're just helping somebody from where they are to get further and lead a better life than they had the chance to lead before. For some people, and those are the people that we are here for, when they're around the horses, they are the most interesting, the most interested, the most animated, the most relaxed, more able to cooperate, more able to concentrate, certainly more able to communicate. We spend time with young people, helping them to understand that they can do things and encourage people to transfer the learning from being with the horse to being away from the horse, but basing their success on the transfer of the skill. People realize that it didn't matter to the horse whether you had a disability or not, that um, really you could be quite successful and use the four good legs of the horse to accomplish something. The horse can add to and enrich the lives of persons who are able and persons with disabilities. Horses are sentient beings and they've been part of uh, mankind's evolution, humanity's evolution as a civilization for thousands of years. Truly, I think it has developed from the beginning of time when we first domesticated horses and rode horses. The benefits of equine facilitated therapy are wide-reaching and varied. The positive changes that clients experience isn't just seen by practitioners and therapists though. The students notice themselves improving. There are physical and, and emotional and educational benefits to equine assisted activities and therapy. Movement, uh, emotional benefits. Muscle strength, muscle coordination. Trust, teamwork. Learning how to work cooperatively with others. Respect. Learning uh, about boundaries. Visual coordination, improvements in balance, improvements in body symmetry. Tell me I'm not to recognize when I need to wash my own hair. When it's greasy, it's helped me a lot by like, giving myself clean hygiene because that's very important when we're in the yard. If you like muck out stable, you, um, it helps you how, to, how your bedroom should look. But always, mine's always tidy. For those with learning disabilities, it's building self esteem, it's, it's teaching them spatial relations, sequencing skills, there are a lot of good things that come out of learning how to brush a horse, learning how to tack the horse up, and then learning how to ride it. And it's through communication, it's through sharing, that when you've had certain experiences in life, there are um, results, consequences. Uh, educational benefits, learning responsibility. To learn your ABCs, to learn your numbers, your colors, your shapes. Sometimes it's just that motivation of wanting to learn about the horse and about the care of the horse that gets the students really psyched up. I like working with the horses because you can learn more things about new things with horses and then with the school. Many of the young people at the FCRT found that conventional schools were not the best places for them to be after they had been bullied or had found the lessons too hard or not motivating enough. Coming to the FCRT has given them a greater sense of focus and purpose. Just because I was different doesn't mean they could bully me. We've worked with young people who truant from school, who, who don't turn up and whose behaviour is unmanageable actually in ordinary situations. And I can think of examples of young people like that who won't go and attend their local school but they will actually get themselves here 
which involve in quite a long journey each morning and each evening and they will get up before everybody else and they get themselves here and they will participate in the learning that we're offering. And that in itself demonstrates the tremendous power that the horse holds as an incentive to attend education and to learn. First things first, <laughs> working with horses is a lot more fun when they're doing like math and English. It's really boring. Well, I'm um, being here about is learning how to cope with difficult things and getting better and, and riding the horses and just enjoying the company of friends and everything because I don't really like being on my own sometimes. Being with the horses, being with my friends. I mean, they're like a family. I like the fact they're really patient and they're, they're really good to groom and good to ride. And they really help you. They're very good therapy horses and I've just seen they're brilliant to look after. Mm -hmm. I've been to the Fortune Centre for Therapy for three years and I really enjoyed that. The students at the FCRT are given authentic responsibility. It's up to them to look after a horse during their three years. Having a regular routine and sense of purpose helps the students gain more independence and confidence. We followed staff and students to see what really happens during a day at the FCRT. And what appeals to me here is that I've seen the horses are used in a completely different way. And so you see like the students who are here the difficulties that they have and you can see them start to learn things through the horse. So I've had my group of students for a year now and when they came they I mean hardly knew anything and they had no concept of a routine or they had no concept of how to look after themselves or how to work in a team and now they understand what a routine is they can start to work together and they've learned all of that through looking after their own individual horse here. Once I've got a routine, I stick to it. At seven o'clock, I go to up. Well, I'm at my bed more. <laughs> um, I don't like getting up too early, but I have to. So I can sort out the horses first to board myself. I got three alarms. Yeah, one on my watch, one on my phone, and one on my alarm clock. Okay. We get up, get dressed. And then we get all the horses sorted. And then you check if they got cut bruises, and see if they got four shoes. And then you groom them. That's it, and that's the stable door open. I cried because I was like really, really shocked and really ashamed of myself and then I laughed afterwards. So I said, don't worry to me, it happens. He didn't go far. Then one o'clock we go in for lunch. I do uh, cooking on Friday. Um, I cook dinner and lunch usually. And then at two o'clock we're back out on the yard. I do vaulting on Monday mornings mm -hmm. and I rise after lunch. Last time my first and second year when I was riding Chinny, <laughs> Chinny went ballistic, he shot off into canter and I went flying straight over his head <laughs> and onto my back. Right. Yep, yeah, I just got up and got back onto him. We get off, sort, um, untack them, make sure they're okay, give them their hang net, have their feed. We've been looking out, grooming and sweeping the yard making it look the best for Miss Reston. And hopefully we win 
Yard of the Week. We did once, which was good. I do the hay nets, um, grooming, sweeping. We do skipping out, mucking out, field droppings. We tackling the best we can. Tackle the horses ready for our lesson. Which can sometimes be difficult when you you have to be on time. Hay nets, water field droppings, water troughs, and then whatever your task of the week is, do you do that? At horse feed time, when the horses are eager to be fed and some of them bang their doors and they have a look of expectation on their face, and the students go across the yard with the feed and meet the needs of the horses who immediately in their behaviour make it very clear to the person that's given them the feed that they have met the need through their own action and students begin to see that they can be influential and that that is appreciated. In the evening there are lots of activities on offer too. Different sessions are run for the students and sports, games, art and cookery can all continue to improve the balance, coordination and spatial awareness that they learn when working with the horses. Yes, I, I went to the cyber festival. Yeah, oh, that was good. Playing the Wii Fit. Dancing the <laughs> Wii yeah, funny. Yeah, it's very funny. Um, I can hang out with my friend Ben. Um, reading. Um, doing art. Oh, we do sports, like foot, football. I love doing dancing. Working at the Fortune Centre of Riding Therapy, I see the opportunities that are available learning in an equine facilitated environment. But I think it's important to recognise and to emphasise even that people can learn through whatever medium really motivates, interests and excites them. And so of course learning through other animals is of great benefit and there are many people for whom learning through horses would not be helpful. We went to the Royal United Hospital in Bath to see Pets as Therapy dog Muppet in action. So obviously the whole premise of, of Pets as Therapy is we've got ha happy healthy dogs um, with a fantastic temperament that can go visiting. About four years ago when we first were introduced to Muppet. We uh, had no idea what a huge difference she would make to the ward. We started off going into a residential home where people fed her biscuits and it, it got a bit out of hand. So we then uh, approached the hospital and we've been here for four, four and a half years. With the 5,000 visiting dogs that we have, we, we touch over 150,000 people each week. I think as, as word spreads it's, and the benefits are shown, uh, more and more people realise what, how beneficial it is to have pets as therapy. It's not a hospital procedure, it's, it's not somebody um, doing a procedure on your child, it's not something to worry about, it's a very natural thing, it's a normal thing. My best memory was, um, there was a young lady in here called Emily, she was a long term patient and we used to come and visit and she was very sort of like quiet and very reserved. Once the, her treatment was, was readjusted, she became an absolute live wire and absolutely loved interacting with Muppet. Sadly, unfortunately, she lost her fight for life earlier this year, but she was the you know sort of like fundamental in voting for Muppet and that's really what it was all about. We also visited Thrive, a Berkshire-based charity that uses gardening and horticulture to help individuals with physical and mental difficulties. Hi, my name is Neil. I'm here because I had a stroke. Coming here is a therapeutical rehabilitation to try and get me mentally and physically back to normal. What I originally started with, I had an accident five and a half years ago. I ended up getting severe brain damage. I didn't have much hope in my life. People treated me like a child all the time. I was treated like an adult for once. 
Uh, basically, um, I've been blind since birth. When I first came to Thrive, I didn't know my way around at all. As part of the package of the rehabilitation, I joined Thrive. After the two years, I was asked if I'd like to join as a member of staff, as an assistant. I think we help them physically with their health, improving their physical health. I also think we help them improve their psychological health. I think mentally I've changed quite a lot. It's made me a calmer person. Well, it made me feel a bit like the, the, the purpose of coming here was being acknowledged. I've just progressed more and more as I went along. We had one chap who came here who really felt his life had ended. He'd had a stroke and he absolutely, through the programme, started to see there was future potential. And he became this extraordinary beacon for what you can do. It is a leisure activity, but it's much more beyond that. It would be very valuable and very important if therapeutic horticulture was acknowledged by the NHS because personally I think people get more development and a better product from measure of the surroundings they're in, the people they're mixing with, is better than any drug you can get. For any form of educational therapy to be successful, the client's welfare must be paramount. However, in the equine facilitated therapy, the horse's safety and well-being must also be at the forefront of practitioners' mind. It's very easy to get carried away for your client, your students, and say, gosh, I can really let them understand how dangerous the situation can be or how beneficial the situation can be by learning. But if you don't keep that balanced, you can overface your students with challenges, you can frighten them too much. You cannot challenge them enough if you're just being over supporting, say, oh, isn't it lovely? They can have a great time, you know, and then they don't, because challenge involves risk. So I do think you do have to balance that. And one thing about the Fortune Centre is we have a very good team, collegiate way of managing things. So it's never possible, I think, for things to get out of balance too far. She's just really anxious about her move. Yeah. So she's, um, the best thing to do when she kind of gets like that is to take her away for the other students. Because what used to happen was that when she acted like that, it triggered the rest of them. But she's fine and as soon as you take her out to the horses she immediately calms down and she starts to kind of talk a little bit more. Yeah, because Jess May was angry. I told her to calm down. I did. You need to make sure that they're all right with what's happened and that they understand what's happened and not to be kind of, you know, give her a wide berth or to try and see things which would cause it to happen more. Around the horses they are less inclined to be angry because that may frighten the horses. We care about the horse's safety and we care about your safety. So we're all, we always are talking about safety first. We have a huge responsibility. We have a huge responsibility for the safety and welfare of the client because we put them up on a horse or we put them around a horse and we must take care that uh, they don't get hurt. You know, as a facilitator, as a practitioner, I need to make sure I'm in the right state to be able to be working with other people, which means a commitment to, you know, a lifetime journey for my own personal growth, my own physical and mental health and well-being. Be really clear about it, be professional, be insured, be ethical, provide the right facility and, you know, provide your horses with, with what they need as horses, you know. I am constantly evaluating whether the grounds are safe, whether the paddocks are safe, whether our horses are in good shape um, and their behavior is up to par. The horses need to be trained, the horses need to be ready, and the horses need to be healthy. There is a huge issue um, when you're thinking about using animals in a program such as this. We have to be very aware of, of equine welfare. I personally think that Therapeutic riding is one of the toughest jobs for a horse because they have to deal with riders that are not necessarily balanced. Um, they have to deal with riders that are mentally not necessarily stable and they have to all sort it out. So they need to be mentally sound 
and capable of absorbing and understanding the conflicting messages that they get from writers. I was nervous, of course, first, but now I'm confident. For both mentally or physically challenged children and their parents, equine facilitated therapy can be a breath of fresh air. Parents we spoke to noticed a positive change in their children after they had been to the FCRT. The students themselves now have aspirations far beyond what they may have believed was possible just a few years earlier. The medical profession never ever thought she would achieve what she has or where she is. It wasn't thought that Lucy would survive delivery but she did. Horses don't judge people by their disability or ability, by their height, their weight, their colour, their faith. As far as horses are concerned, we are all equal, all the same. I want to ride with horses. I'm hopefully going to get a job with animals and go to college. Uh, come back and do more with riding um, is like horses. At home, you get stuck and you miss them so much and come out and get them feeling back. She's proved them wrong every step of the way, uh, much to their delight. Um, and she's here a goer, aren't you? I am. Yeah. So she's learning to do things without realising it. Sort of subconsciously, she's being instructed to do things. So she's learning things that she didn't realise she was learning. It was this subconscious development of ideas and way of doing things, which is a lovely way of learning, actually. <laughs> um, the fact that, you know, the scoops of food and... Well, how many scoops have you given to that horse? Well, two of that and one of that... Oh, three! Whereas if you'd even given her coins, it wouldn't have made three. Um, I'm hopefully gonna get a job um, either with children or small animals or with elderly and I'm hopefully going to live independently or with some support with a group of friends. Lucy is, what's your favourite saying? Go for it! <laughs> and she's so determined to go for it. As long as she can curb her bossiness, because unfortunately she's picked that up from me. <laughs> According to Lucy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of inspired her to think, which is hugely encouraging. Lucy needs to be as able as she's able to be. And that's why I fought tough and nail to get her to the Fortune Centre. And I just wish there were more Fortune Centres throughout the country. Because I think working with horses does a lot more for young people with disabilities than the professionals want to even believe. Equine facilitated therapy has the potential to change lives. The phenomenal impact that it can have on those with physical and mental difficulties still resonates with practitioners. Interestingly, someone said to me the other day that what they valued most about horses was their ability to lift up people in wheelchairs so that people in wheelchairs who normally were looked down on were in a position when they were on a horse to look down on other people. And that for them was a fantastic opportunity. We had a, a little girl who came and rode with us and she was virtually nonverbal when she came to us. Knowing that her mother had a real love for horses, she started in hippotherapy program 
and Bernadette started working with her and started encouraging her to ask the pony to walk or whoa or whatever. She was giving, starting to give Tucker directions. She was so excited about being able to get this pony to to go and do what she wanted him to do that eventually she started she started riding outside and whatnot and then she would transfer what she was learning here to when she went home and she was working with her mother's horse Nelson and all of a sudden she came back one day and she came whipping into the barn and she said hi Tucker I'm back I've never heard her say that much before and she was confident enough and interested enough and motivated enough to want to speak. She had never talked before then and she was seven years old. The success for students at the Fortune Center of Riding Therapy has to be about long-term success. And for many of them, success is in independent living. And we have, for example, three former students who are living in an independent situation with the appropriate amount of support given to them, but it's been very helpful for students that we have here at the moment to meet with those people and for success to be handed on rather like a, a baton because there is nothing like hearing from people who've achieved from a similar starting point as oneself. Do you think that you would be able to sort of live as independently as you do without having been to the Fortune Centre? No. No, because I wouldn't have had the right skills though that I've been taught. And the confidence as well and mm. knowing everything, like how to keep safe. Um, it helped us to budget and... Stay in control of the money. Yeah. Horses enable people with learning difficulties and disabilities to have aspirations and to achieve. That particular gentleman, he was in his 40s, I think. He would write and um, no verbal skills, no nothing. We really, he was very profound challenged. And one time his parents watched that gentleman he was riding and he was laughing and having a good old time. Um, and the parents were sitting there and watching. And the next week when the group came back, one of the staff person comes up to me and says, um, I just wanted to let you know that the parents changed the do not resuscitate order on their son. And because they felt that he does have a quality of life, which they didn't feel before. And that, that was quite um, moving to me. If you're watching in the UK, you can contact the Fortune Centre of Riding Therapy via the website www.fortunecentre.org or by calling 01425 673 297. If you're watching outside of the UK, you can contact Horses and Education and Therapy International through their website www.hetifederation.org. These organizations will help you to find the service that will be best suited to your needs.